Welcome to the League of Legends patch preview. In this video, we'll be covering some of the major balance changes coming into the next patch for League of Legends. This video won't cover all the changes, so stay tuned for the full update in the release notes. Graves came out last patch, and he seems to be on the stronger side of champions. We do have a couple of nerfs aimed for him here. What are we doing? Graves' passive is a little deceptive. Ranged DPS champions are typically pretty squishy. The counter to them is to get in there, assassinate them, or burst them down before they can do too much sustained damage. It seems like a small nerf to make it die off a little faster and to make it only 10 less armor and MR. The numbers on paper seem small. It's, you know, it's only 10 armor and MR off of uh, the current value. But the values of armor and MR, each point is more valuable the less of it you have. So it actually is pretty substantial to his survivability. The other thing we wanted to hit was the kind of maximum damage case of Buckshot. We removed a little bit of damage for the multi-hit case if you hit with all the shells or multiple shells of the Buckshot ability. Only a little bit. We still want him to dash in there. We still want him to Buckshot your face and get big bonus damage from that, but not quite as big as what he's getting now. It was turning him into a little bit too much of a burst caster. Along with all the uh, normal kind of carry scaling he already gets by buying AD, buying attack speed, buying crit, and these other kind of items that you expect him to see to get already. Wukong has a few buffs aimed for this patch. He's getting a couple of offensive increases and a lot of changes to decoy. What's going on with these? So the changes to Wukong are just a uh, couple of small buffs to get him a little bit more in line with fighters, but the thing I really want to talk about is the W bug fixes and kind of cleanup work there. Decoy is getting a lot of bug fixes and cleanup. It's a lot of under the hood fiddly stuff. It's not, you know, buffs or nerfs. It does make it more usable uh, in the fact that it is more deceptive. You're not going to see some of these telltale signs like, jittery jittery model work when he casts it or losing mana when uh, Wukong casts spells and things like that. It's just going to be cleaner, more usable, and more uh, convincing to the enemy. So you can use it in kind of those fake out cases where sometimes you might just stand still and not cast it. Other times you actually do cast it. Really keep opponents guessing more effectively than it allows you to currently. The other buffs are really just to bring him up in more line with current top lane fighters. Uh, they're pretty minor. A little bit of damage on his crushing blow ability and a little bit of uh, attack speed on Nimbus Strike. This should bring him up in line to comparable with other fighters, generally speaking. Olaf has a pretty major change to his ultimate coming into the next patch. What are we doing with this? Olaf can now use Ragnarok to break out of current CC effects. This is kind of the Alistar treatment on it. We think this is going to give him a lot more ability to use this to get in and get in close effectively and really do the damage he needs to do. As a result, we did have to bring down the duration of his CC immunity uh, higher ranks because basically the combination of the old duration and that ability were way too powerful and you literally couldn't do anything to Olaf, he just came in and killed you. This should make it so it's a lot more usable and you can close a lot more effectively, but enemy players can also predict the duration of that ultimate more reliably and counter Olaf if they're smart about holding their CCs until a little later. Almost every one of Shaco's abilities is getting tweaked in some way in the next patch. What are we trying to do with Shaco here? Our goals with these changes are really to make Shaco more reliable and usable and make it so that you can get done what you need to get done more often. The reason we took some of the damage down on boxes is that's only really applicable in the Shaco nest of Jack in the Boxes in the Bush situation you see now. This thing is kind of fun to do for a couple of games and it's kind of interesting, but it's not really the whole kit of Shaco. Being a one trick pony like that is really gonna keep him out of ever being effective and viable. The big thing about the Jack in the Box changes though is we have increased the range and decreased the arm time. This is actually very massive for Shaco because in the combat scenario where you're, let's say you're coming out to gank a guy, you throw that box on the other side to trap their escape in, that's going to go further uh, about the distance they're probably going to go when they're trying to run away from you as Shaco. Arm faster and be able to get that fear right when you need it. We think overall this is going to be a pretty big buff to Shaco as an assassin who comes out of kind of an unseen location and ganks you, has good CC with the box, and can slow you down now with the clone. He's going to be a lot harder to escape from, and we think that's good because his burst damage isn't that high to begin with. He needs to be in there longer, doing damage more effectively. We also have a bunch of updates coming in for Dominion. What are we doing this patch, and what are our plans for the future for Dominion updates? We did one change to Dominion this patch, which is we have lowered the amount of respawn time bonus you get for having less points than the enemy. We're gonna see, you know, less rubber banding from this, less comebacks that shouldn't have happened, but not eliminate the possibility of a comeback, which is always the goal. We do have a lot of other changes that are in testing right now that weren't quite ready for this patch. I wanted to talk about those a little bit really quickly just to let players know that we do have a lot of aggressive changes in the works right now that are working to solve these problems 
in ways that add even new gameplay opportunities and more ways for you to succeed in different ways on Dominion and have more moments of personal glory, which is some areas we really think we can improve in the next few patches. Thanks for tuning in to the League of Legends patch preview. Please subscribe to the Riot Games YouTube channel above and don't forget to thumbs us up just below the video.